Om, Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvina Vaditamastu, Mavidvishavahai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om, may the divine being look over us lovingly as a mother and father. May the divine being support and nourish us as a mother and father. May we have the strength and skill to study together the art of spirituality. May no misunderstandings arise amongst us. Om peace, peace, peace and beneficence be unto us and to all beloved beings everywhere. Hari Om Tat Sat. So good morning everyone and welcome to our Sunday morning gathering of the congregation to hear a talk <coughs> about spiritual principles and practices <coughs> that lead to self-realization or God-realization. That's what we do. That's the purpose of our gathering. And it's just so wonderful that you gather with us to do this study of the art of spirituality together because it strengthens it for each of us. So again, a great good morning to you. Uh, there are some announcements. For those of you who are local enough to come, our chapel is open for your use as you wish from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. Now, that said, Sometimes I have to be away from the center, like for medical appointments on Monday and Tuesday. If you're coming, it's good to be to call and make sure that either Aaron or myself will be here, because if both of us are gone, the chapel will be locked. So it's always good to call ahead, or, or, uh, yeah, it's it's good to call. Just call the center's number; it forwards to my cell phone. Personal meetings with me are by appointment only. Uh, please arrange a meeting by calling by phone. <clears throat> As I said, the center's phone works fine. You can just call it and forwards to myself, or you can send me an email. <clears throat> so any comments or questions about the use of the chapel? Anything anyone would like to say? Okay. Sri Ramakrishna's birthday this year will be celebrated with a puja on Sunday, uh, February the 26th. This is the same day it's being celebrated by other Ramakrishna mission centers. So this great spiritual current is generated across the country. Um, the actual birthday is, of course, February 21st this year by the lunar calendar, but we're doing it on the 26th so that we can part, be part of this big spirit, great spiritual current that is generated by these pujas going on. So it'll be on Sunday, February 26th from 11 a.m. to approximately 12.30 p.m., Mother willing. Aditya Chaturvedi will be our pujari. We're so fortunate. <clears throat> this will be live streamed on Zoom. There's no in-person attendance. But if you wish to pick up some of the Master's Prasad, uh, that can be picked up anytime on Sunday afternoon or Monday by arrangement. Again, call me or email me. So those are the announcements that I have. Are there any other announcements that anyone knows of that should have been made or could have been made? All right. <clears throat> so we'll begin this morning with our statement of what bhakti yoga is from this is its, uh, the understanding for from here 
February is a month for study of bhakti yoga. A bhakti yoga, a bhakta, establishes a devotional relationship with God through study, prayer, ritual, and worship. This often begins with a feeling of reverence or awe, which may slowly grow into a unerring conviction that everything without exception manifests God's glory, power, and grace. As a bhakta, you practice giving all, you practice giving every action, thought, emotion, and perception, and your personal tendencies a Godward turn. All your energies and attributes, both positive and negative, are offered to the divine presence. Your prayer is for self-surrender and ultimately union with your beloved. So that's a statement of what bhakta, a bhakta's life is and a, a what bhakti yoga is. Any comments from anyone or questions or concerns about what was said before we go on to today's topic? Anything at all from anyone, if there's any want of clarification or any comment of what it's like to be a bhakta or no a bhakta from your own experience, uh, that would always be welcome. This is not a, uh, this is a, this is a studying together. So whatever you offer is cherished. All right. The topic today is one without a second. Last week we heard that there is a frame of reference in spiritual life in which we don't even talk about one because that um, suggests two. So there is that frame of reference that we talked about last week. <clears throat> but there is another frame of reference, <clears throat> as Sri Ramakrishna said, that that we spoke of last week is beyond is and is not. Now there is this subtle manifestation of the divine. We know this is a fact because of the scriptures and the great saints and avatars both speak of it, write of it, and uh, embody it. Mostly they don't write, but uh, they do their disciples right. So there is this one, there is this one in manifestation. And this one is genderless. And it really is, it has no second. There is no, it just, it appears in different forms, but it isn't two. It's always and only one, one without a second. <clears throat> now I'm going to repeat the caveat <clears throat> for those of you <coughs> who are new to us. Um, nothing that is said here from here is meant as personal instruction for you, something that you should or even could do. It's simply meant as a description of these spiritual practices and principles from which you take anything at all that is useful to you. And perhaps that means nothing at all. You may not be temperamentally a bhakta. And so you may find nothing here that is of uh, use in your spiritual life. That's fine. Uh, the fact that you care to listen is, uh, is part of this cherished uh, togetherness that is our congregation. So, uh, so please understand that this is not meant as personal instruction for you. It is simply some observations about uh, spiritual practices and principles in the bhakti yoga tradition. Anything at all that wants to be said from your own perspective or any concern or question that any of that raises. 
All right. Now, please understand that it, this is not, this is a conversation. This is not a, a, a lecture. Uh, that isn't done. We, we have conversations with you. And so feel free to break in at any time, any time with a comment from your own wisdom or experience or a concern or a question that something that has been said or read uh, raises for you. Please do feel free to do that. So as a follower of the path of devotion, you offer a, your daily life to your chosen ideal, that aspect of the divine presence, that one aspect of the divine presence that appeals to your heart. As I said, there's only one, but it appears in many forms. So you, the, your chosen ideal is that form that appeals to your heart. You also may integrate bhakti yoga with practices from karma, raja, or jnana yoga to purify your body, mind, and heart. As Christ said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Sri Ramakrishna says, not only will you see God, but talk intimately with her or him. For Sri Ramakrishna, it was her in the form of Mother Kali, Shakti. Sri Ramakrishna says, not only will you see God, but talk intimately with her or him. The Master promises that God then leads you toward union with your beloved, the goal of uh, that one without a second, which is the goal, the end of your spiritual journey. I, As, yes. Oh, I, am I interrupting of, of the flow? Not at all. Please go right ahead. Like, I just suddenly had a thought, a question um, can a person have a bhaktas orientation to their spiritual practice without a spiritual ideal? Yes. <clears throat> the short answer is yes. It's often talked about as, you know, you have the spiritual ideal and you talk, I mean, I understand that. Um, and for some people that happens, but for some people it doesn't happen whether they want it to or not, but they still have a very strong experience of the divine in a uh, relationship sort of way, like a bhakta would. Yes, yes, something from the heart. Yes, it doesn't have to fix itself on a form or even formless aspect of the divine. It can simply be that reverence, that sense of thouness, without it uh, having any form or, uh, or formless aspect. So yes, definitely that can happen. And I'm glad you asked that question because some people might think that that was necessary. As we'll see from what is going to be read next from Swami Vivekananda, it does not mention a chosen ideal. It mentions practices, <clears throat> ways of being, that allow you to become free of all limitation. And could I add to Cindy's question? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. fine. So could just gen a general attitude of gratitude uh, be that, and I, 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 I'm thinking of the title of this book. I didn't read the book, but the title caught me. It was called Gratefulness, the Heart of Prayer. Well, and, absolutely, Tom. That that gratitude uh, is is part of this maturing of this feeling of awe and reverence with with which bhakti uh, the bhakta often starts. Uh, we become grateful for this 
experience of life, however we are experiencing it. Uh, and it is a very auspicious attitude, and yet it need not fix itself uh, on any, you're not grateful to any particular being of, of, of form or formless aspect, but simply to universe itself for providing you with this experience of life. Yes, indeed. So that's closer to what I have. I have, I have basically no idea what anything is. It's a complete mystery to me. Uh, but I'm here, and it seems pretty wonderful, and I feel grateful for it. Well, you you share that with uh, some very great saints, including uh, Kabir and uh, and Tukaram from the uh, from the uh, uh, Sanatana Dharma traditions and with uh, Rabia from the Sufi tradition. And for that matter, St. Thomas Aquinas, who said creation both does and does not exist. <laughs> <clears throat> I remember one time in, we were having a class, I think it was a Wednesday class, I can't remember the book, <coughs> excuse me, in the chapel when we used to have classes sometimes in the chapel. And, and our dearly departed friend Tom Couch, we were talking about, you know, chosen ideal, having a form or not having a form or, um, and he made the statement um, that sometimes he just, he needs or wants somebody to thank, you know, to think, to feel thankful, but he's like, who am I thanking? I needed somebody to thank. And I thought that it really stuck with me when he said that. Well, of course, because... as, as we know, because we knew Tom well, um, and his spiritual practice as well, uh, his chosen ideal was Christ. And he had a lovely picture of Christ that was the focus of his daily uh, use of his mantra. And uh, so it was it was very sweet, but yes, uh, yes. It's hard to think. It's hard to, to think. You can feel gratitude, but if you actively think, it's hard to do it without having some, some form uh, of being to, to think. So uh, I, I, I think Tom was very right. Well, it sure, it, it sure makes it easier. <laughs> yes, it sure does. For for me, for definitely. Ma and pa. Hmm? For me, it's brother. Ma pa. Taku or ma. You know, just thank you, thank you, thank you. And all of the and, and all of what they've produced. You can thank the orange that you cut in the morning for its life and its sacrifice. Hmm. Brother uh Gaurav here. Yes, Gaurav. Uh, I've noticed, uh, like, even if you, even if you're going through the most difficult times, if you reach out to like, uh, mother, uh, I'm doing what you want me to do. Uh, just give me enough power so that I can get through the hurdles that you're putting in my way. And if you're achieving something, and if you've done something good, in order to take the eye out of it, say that, mom, uh, this is your great work, and. And it automatically does that, means that ego of I just goes goes away. Oh, very well said, Gaurav. And what you've done is foreshadow a prayer that I will read in a few moments by Swami Paramananda. Uh, this is a, exactly the posture uh, that uh, you will see uh, uh, with, a, with a bit more because he was speaking from that Swami position. <clears throat> but... Uh, uh, you know, there's, but the, what you just said is embodied in this prayer that I'll read of Swami Paramananda's. Thank you, Gora. Yeah, and exactly. almost uh, one more thing. It almost feels like the stress that you have or the thing, it just goes away magically. It means I've noticed it in personal well, levels. Yes. And, and Holy Mother Sri Sharada Devi said, you will ultimately see all suffering as a blessing, all of our, all the trials. Why? Because they draw our attention back to the divine. We don't, uh, we don't think much about the divine when 
everything is pleasant and we're happy. Yes, totally. Thank you, Gaurav. Anyone else before we go on? All right. This is from Swami Vivekananda. It's familiar to you, but you'll see why it's so um, applicable to what we're talking about, one without a second, because it talks about the one, but the one as it is within you, each of us. He's, he said, each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature, external and internal. Do this either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free. This is the whole of religion. Doctrines or dogmas or rituals or books or temples or forms are but secondary details. So what is the primary? The primary is to do the work of controlling external nature and internal nature, either by work, karma yoga, or worship, bhakti yoga, or psychic control, Raja Yoga, or philosophy, Jnana Yoga, by one or more or all of these, and be free. So this is, he said, this is the primary, everything else, doctrine, doctrines or dogmas or rituals or books or temples or forms are but secondary details. And that includes the palaver from here this morning. What is important is what arises in you because of it, which is why it's so cherished, those of you who share, even those who you do not share, you're still sharing because you're hearing, responding, and that current of unity is in affected and inflected by your experience of it. So each infinite uh, <clears throat> being, <clears throat> unique and infinite being that we are in manifestation is, is very much a part of this and we feel it. So before I go on to read a little bit about Swami Paramananda and his prayer, uh, is there anything else from anyone? Brother Shankara? Yes, dear. I do have a question, um, you know, the controlling nature, external and internal. I um, try to think of external nature is how we sort of come across in the, the world outside our behavior and internal is our thoughts and feelings, not necessarily controlling the external nature means like the nature, nature outside, because I don't think that uh, Swamiji would say control the nature outside. Nature yes, is yes, yes, Swayam, he does. He says, matter is not your master. You are the master of matter. You can bend universe to your will. You can control it by your the power of your mind. And he's not saying you should do this that you should bend it to your will and that you yourself become part of sustaining and um, transforming the universe, although you can. But he's saying it, it just you can hold the thought and hold the conviction that external nature need not control me. I am in control of it. So it's, it's the gunas need, they may control the actions of this body, but they, that is not the divinity within. The divinity within is beyond the uh, reach of the gunas. So he does say that. So pardon my interrupting, but I didn't want to let that go. Now, internal nature, 
uh, of course, means the th your thoughts, your feelings, your perceptions. And then as we sink below the uh, two outer wraps or koshas, uh, the, the food body and the uh, uh, energy body, we find that there's a great deal more going on in the mind and intellect and uh, buddhi uh, than, uh, than we knew when we were focused on the, our, on the external. So with that long interruption, is there more to what you wanted to say or uh, to your question? Uh, no, Brother Shankara, that clarifies it. Thank you. Okay. But thanks for bringing that up because that is confusing to a lot of people. What does he mean by external and internal nature? Brother uh, Shankara. Yes, Uma. Um, I want to add, bring up one name of a poet, Bhakta, as well as Param Gnani. He the way he visualized and actually wrote poems out of poets in Gujarati. And this is the poet Narsi Mehta. He was, I think, a great poet in the <coughs> Middle Ages in mm -hmm. Gujarat. And one of his bhakti poems, Vaishnava Janato, that you call a true Vaishnava who does this, 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 which was very, very dear to Mahatma Gandhi. But apart from that, very few people know what kind of deep gnani as well as bhakta he was, like Ramakrishna. And particularly one poet, which I will read, I mean, speak in Gujarati and translate two lines, one without second. He says, Akhila Brahmandama Ek Tum Shri Hari. Shri Hari, you are the only one in the entire universe who knows who appears in many, many, many different forms, but virtually he is the only one appearing as many. Yes. Many multi million forms, Ananda, endless, infinite. Yes. And that is Brahman. And he was such a deep gnani and a bhakta combined. Thank you for bringing this up, Uma. That, yes. And uh, of course, these, uh, these great souls are influential on such as Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, it was said of Sri Ramakrishna by Vivekananda, he was all bhakta on the outside, yes. but all gnani on the inside. Exactly. So right. this, Some this, of these poems are deeply touching. It's oh, I'm pure sure they are. Pure well, send, send, send a couple of his poems in translation okay. to us, sure. uh, Uma. Sure. And, <laughs> just short ones, not great yeah, long yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. Short ones. And we'll include them with this talk. And, sure. and a little, we'll post them along with this talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With a note that they were uh, sent to you, sent to us by you. Okay, that's so, okay. Thank you, Uma. Sure, thank you. Anything else before uh, this little bit from Swami Paramananda, and then we can continue our conversation, or we can continue our conversation right now if there's anything else that anyone wants to say. Shankara? Yes, dear. Um, I'm reminded of a uh, a poem by um, St. John of the Cross, mm -hmm. and I pulled out my love poems from God so I can read it. <laughs> Please do. And it's, it's the one, um, it's the one titled, Why Does Not the Church Tell You? Mm -hmm. And at the very end, it says, 
Why does not my sacred church tell you God only sees himself? Yes, this is what we see when we see clearly, accurately. We see only ourselves, the divine being. And have, seeing it within us, we see it then everywhere. Thank you, Lori. And if you choose to type that little poem up and send it to Cindy, we'll post that one with the talk as well. But only if you choose. Okay. It's, it isn't, okay. that's, not a, that's not even a request. It's just an invitation. I will. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, God sees only himself. Or, you know, for those of you whose chosen ideal is the divine feminine, she sees only herself. There is no gender really in this one without a second. The gender is added later in, in, the, in the forms. Anything else from anyone? All right. Uh, as more background for our conversation, here's a prayer by Swami Paramananda. Paramananda was a disciple of Swami Vivekananda. He was sent to New York in 1906 at the age of 22 to be an assistant at the previously established Vedanta Society of New York. So he was he sent he was there sent there in 1906. He uh, lived and taught there until 1909. Then he lectured throughout the United States, Europe, and Asia for 24 years until his death in 1940. He founded four non-sectarian ashramas two in the United States, and two in Kolkata, India. They are still thriving today. The two in America are Ananda Ashrama in La Crescenta, California, which is near Glendale, it's in near North Glendale. That was founded in 1923, and I've been there many times, uh, many devotees and disciples, of the Vedanta Society of Southern California visit the monks and nuns there. And the second one is a Vedanta Center in Cohasset, Massachusetts, which he founded, the Swami founded in 1929. They're still both functioning, both thriving, as it is said. In how, do you, how do you spell Cohasset? Cohasset? Uh -huh. uh, it's C O H A S S E T, Cohasset, C O H A S S E T, Massachusetts. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's this prayer by Swami Paramananda By love and aspiration, by love and aspiration. You can open yourself to the divine blessing. When your thoughts rise with the perfume of purity, when your thoughts wow. rise with the perfume of pu purity, wow. we are often, we often, we can, when they, <laughs> when they rise with the perfume of poetry, we can offer them to him who accepteth our adoration. Whenever you try to serve him with spontaneous feeling, without thought of yourself, whenever you try to serve him or her with spontaneous feeling, without thought of self, then nothing can resist you, then nothing can resist you. Know this, and nothing will ever be able to thwart you. When you start with generous, devoted spirit, and your efforts 
when you start with generous devoted spirits, all your efforts must meet with success. Spirituality is a revelation. This is, it is reached not only by the prophet or the teacher, but also by the devotees who humble and who are in, but also by the, it is revealed not only to the prophet, but to the, uh, and the teacher, but also to the devotee who is humble, enduring, and selfless. Unless you have spiritual vision, when difficulties arise, you will not be able to meet them. You must <coughs> safeguard yourself by acquiring wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is nothing. I'm sorry. Wisdom is holding and always. No, wisdom is abiding and always sustains. O oh Lord, grant that I might in my ordinary tasks of the day, I may never be, I may be ever mindful of thee. Keep me, help me to do each duty with loving, helpful spirit. May all that be pleasing to thee. In my work, worship, and aspiration, may I seek ever to glorify thee. Increase my endurance and grant me wisdom that I may manifest this spiritual grace and all my words in all my words and actions grant me wisdom that i may manifest thy spiritual grace in my words and actions this is one of a kind very very pop isn't it a beautiful poem it, oh, it's, it's, it'll be in the talk notes Please, yeah. But that's the end of what I have to say to you as uh, prepared text. Now we have nearly a half an hour left, and I hope that what has been offered will result in your feeling something that you would like to share with us. It's not a demand, it's not even a request, it's simply an invitation. So what has all of this, this there being one without a second, that one without a second has many forms. They may or may not be a form that attracts your heart and becomes your chosen ideal, but something happens when we are have this devotional attitude toward the uh, toward the divine in the it's as one without a second what does all this give rise to in you how can we serve you better as a congregation as a teacher from this chair how what what do you want to know what do you want to say Shankara. Yes, dear. I, I know it was kind of a struggle for you to, to see all that and read it, but would you mind reading that again, please? It was so beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Um, all right, I'll do my best. It is a struggle with my vision, but <clears throat> it's not that awfully long. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. By love and aspiration, you open yourself to the divine blessing. When our thoughts rise with the perfume of purity, we can offer them to him or her who accepteth 
our offering. Mm -hmm. Whenever you try to serve him with spontaneous feeling, without thought of self, then nothing can resist you. When you try to serve him with spontaneous feeling, without thought of self, then nothing can resist you. Know this, and nothing will be able to thwart you. When you start with generous, devoted spirit, all your efforts must meet with success. Spirituality is a revelation. It is revealed not only to the prophet or the teacher, but also to the devotee who is humble, enduring, and selfless. Unless you have spiritual vision, when difficulties arise, you will not be able to meet them. You must safeguard yourself by acquiring wisdom. Wisdom is abiding and always sustains. Wisdom is abiding and always sustains. <clears throat> o Lord, grant me that in my ordinary tasks of the day, I may be ever mindful of thy guidance. Help me to do each duty with loving, helpful spirit. May all that I do be pleasing to thee, to thee. May all that I do be pleasing to thee. In my work, worship, and aspiration, may I seek ever to glorify thee. Increase my endurance and grant me the wisdom that I may manifest the spiritual grace, thy spiritual grace. Increase my endurance and grant me wisdom that I may manifest thy spiritual grace in my words and actions. Swami Paramananda. Wow. Wow. You said Thank you so much. Gem of your poem. Yes. And he was a gem of a Swami. If you yeah. look into his work, it's, uh, you can find it abundantly online mm -hmm. and you can be in contact with those two places ananda ashrama in la crescenta california okay and uh, the vedanta center c-e-n-t-r-e -E, vedanta yeah. center in cohasset massachusetts you can find them online also the monks and nuns at those places are extraordinarily serviceful because they work in the spirit of this poem and in the legacy that he left them. Um, uh, they're, they're, really, they're really sweet people. So glad you mentioned, because I don't think I ever heard his name. Well, you know, Vivekananda... Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted. So until you mentioned about what a great Swami and he was Vivekananda's disciple. I did. Yes, Vivekananda did not accept many disciples. Mm -hmm. So they, and, you know, they all were very hardworking. Wow. Most of them remained in India, but a couple of them came here. Paramananda was one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else from anyone? This is astounding. Means I'm still absorbing the poem. It's well, beautiful. With it's, it's it is a wonderful poem. It is a wonderful prayer. It speaks to your heart. I mean, it wants you to be so deeply appealing. Well, you want to be like. That. That's why it was included as background for this discussion mm -hmm. of bhakti yoga a bhakta's experience grant me that 
that yeah. will allow me to manifest thy glory, thy yes. grace, thy power. Yes. If I if that's true, I too, like you, become irresistible. Yeah. Uh, my efforts must meet with success. Mm -hmm. These are strong, strong. statements yes, yes. by someone who knows whereof he speaks. Mm -hmm. This is not speculation. Okay. This is not smoke that he's blowing at you. He's saying, if you become this, mm -hmm. you become as irresistible yes. as the divine presence itself. You become omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. And the words that I like, spontaneity. And oh, yes. God grant me endurance and wisdom. Yes. This too, I mean, it's straight as if uh, coming from his own experience, self-realization. Oh, there's, I don't think there can be any doubt about it, dear. Yeah. And, and, you know, Vivekananda, like his master before him, Vivekananda gave this realization to each of his disciples. Yeah. Another of his disciples was Swami Ashokananda ah. in San Francisco. Yeah. Vivekananda gave him realization. Mm -hmm. He also gave it to Sri Aurobindo. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. Aurobindo, Mahan, Mahagnati. Yeah. So what does this idea of one without a second that abides within you, what can this mean to you? What does this, when those words are said, what, what response comes from you? Thou art that, that one without a second. Mm -hmm. Ah, if there is no second and what we are told over and over again in Vedanta, you are that Brahman is Atman, Atman is Brahman. And so this is to be, this is the feeling that arises in the heart that if we focus not on our ego self, but that higher self, we are possibly nearer to that one. We are that one. We are capable of becoming that one. This is exactly what Krishna says in the Gita. Chapters yeah. 3, 4, and 5, where he describes karma yoga. Yeah. And uh, he contrasts it with the, the, with the jnana yoga and so on. Yeah. He says, just realize, just escape the delusion, Arjuna, mm -hmm. that you are the doer. Mm -hmm. You are not the doer. God alone is the doer. Yes. And it is all happening as a result of his will. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, so you are the witness to all this, mm -hmm. not the doer. And so it, it frees us. It immediately frees us. Yes. I'm not the doer. I'm not responsible for everything that happens. It doesn't mean that I don't participate. Yes, mm -hmm. I participate. But Krishna tells us how to participate, sacramentally, offer it all to me. Every thought, every feeling, or every perception, every action, every mood, every projection, every memory, every reverie, every yes. attitude, every aptitude, every tendency. Yes. Offer it all to me then you are free. And he says, even a little practice of this yoga will free you from the terrible wheel of rebirth and death. 
And this is why I said, and of course Vivekananda says, you integrate these practices of bhakti and karma so that these, these two great forces of, of, of wisdom, mm -hmm. you begin to embody them. And as Uma remarked, you become spontaneous. Yes. Are there instances in any of your lives where you, you've seen this spontaneity, where just suddenly you said, oh my goodness, look what happened, look what yeah. It seemed like I did, yeah. but it just happened spontaneously. Anybody at all have anything like that in their lives? Sometimes uh, when I meditate, I decide uh, not to get up or not for me not to get up and end it. And, and then there's this thing where I just eventually it might happen in 30 seconds or, you know, five minutes or whatever. But I, it's just like I automatically stand up. Yeah. And I don't, I didn't decide to stand up. And I do, kind of, I, I think that, uh, I think that that's kind of the way everything is, but I just don't notice it. Exactly, Tom. Exactly. <laughs> that's that exactly creates, what Krishna tells us. That creates think... all sorts of contradictions and paradoxes because then, you know, you're given meditation instructions. Well, how can you instruct somebody that's not doing anything? And then like logic and reason fall apart. And yep. then there's uh, just sort of a <laughs> joyous state. Exactly. And, uh, logic and reason fall apart. There's a joyous state. Then that passes and I'm miserable again. Yeah. So, well, and, and, and I, then, I'm, being, I'm being, I'm being sarcastic, but, but there are, there's ups and downs in life, you know, you well, get into these ecstatic states, or I get into these ecstatic states sometime, and I think, well, I'd just like this to last forever. You know, yes, I don't ever want to worry about anything again. Exactly. I do. I do. I fall back. You know, but but what down. does that do? That brings you back to meditation so that you can get into that other state again. Yeah. And 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 the great teachers like Adi Shankaracharya tells us. You know, he's he's very methodical in his work book, the Viveka Chudamani. He says, keep at it. The times when you're in that, you call it ecstatic state, will be more prolonged and more frequent until finally you abide there. And these other uh, states of being that have to do with your Parabdha Karma, as he says, uh, they'll come, but they'll last very short periods of time before uh, you return to your uh, free state, your spontaneous state, your state of kaivalya, independence. Thank you, Tom. As that always, your, your straightforwardness is so uh, refreshing. Brother Shankara, this is Haima. Yes, Haima. You said what sparks in you. I, it is the faith and know thyself. These two sparks in me. And also, I want to give a little example of things that happens to me all the time. Divine blessings. These are grace. Divine grace that happens to me almost every single day. But this one example, really, I want to tell you last week, I went to a place in Denver, which I usually don't go. That is the place they said what I was looking for will be available. But there, there's no parking. Uh, they, I mean, there's parking. It's a paid parking. But you have to take the paid pass inside and pay somewhere else. I finished it within half an hour, one hour. I was coming to pay to the machine. The machine kept throwing my credit card out. Mm -hmm. Usually, I take the cash. But that day, particular day, I did not take any cash. I only took one card and then it kept spilling, spitting the card out four times. I was the only one, luckily nobody was behind me. And suddenly one young couple, Mediterranean couple and with their sister or sister-in-law, the three stood behind me in the line. I said, you go ahead, this card is spitting out, machine is spitting out, please you go ahead and I'll work on this with the security. And then the guy finished his uh, paying his parking 
And then I, and then he tried to put my card and then it spilled, spit it out. So then he, he just immediately took his purse out and then took $4 for the parking fee and he left it, he gave it to me. I said, no, 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 I can't accept that. I have to go on why it's not taking. I just spent with this card. It's a 27 is expiration. This is not acceptable. Don't worry about it. You go ahead. And then he said, he and his wife and the sister and the Three, three of them took four dollars and left it at the kiosk right there on the machine. They wouldn't be able to, you just, you just take it. It's only four dollars. Don't worry about it. I said, you are angels today. I really don't need it, but I would go and work on this. Why it's not taking, but they wouldn't listen to me. They left. Very speedily, they left it. They said, just enjoy. Don't worry about it. That was just a God's blessing in it. Thank yes, you. all these things <laughs> happen. <laughs> These things happen to us yes. when we are in that spirit of selflessness. I came out, I started driving. The first red light, there was a lady with the roses <laughs> holding on to selling each rose for $2. I immediately took that $4. Actually, my card worked, but it spit it out. So I never had to spend the $4. I said, oh my God, I, I have these $4. I didn't even need this. I'm going to give it to some charity. And then I came out of the parking lot and the lady was standing there with the roses. Wow. I, I opened my door. I gave $4. I said, I don't need roses. I just want you to have these $4. She said, I have children. I, I'm poor. Please help me buying these roses. I said, I don't need roses. Sell it to someone else. Here is the $4. That's the cash I had. I gave it to her. So it was such a wonderful feeling. I mean, this happens to me all the time, everywhere. Whenever very, I'm very, uh, how beautiful, how beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Yes, these things do happen. And it's so good that you it took dollars and, and paid it forward. You yes. gave it to someone else that I didn't did. need it. It's my footprints. So, I always think when I'm puzzled, God carries me. When I am on normal, he walks with me. I have that faith. That yes. Faith, the faith moves the mountains. Yes. I can truly tell you the faith really moves the mountains. Well, it's it's is it as it says in Paramananda's prayer. Everything that you do must meet with success because it's not you doing it. It is the divine, it is the one without You're a right. second that is doing it. Those people their divinity manifested itself in their selfless generosity in that moment. As you said, I didn't need the four dollars. So I, 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 I immediately there, I found that there was someone else who did need it. Really so needed I gave it to really them. Needed. So, so Jai, 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 the divine presence, the one without a second. Thanks for letting me share this. Thank you, and thank you for sharing it. Anything at all from anyone to, to, to close us out here? There's, there's, you know, doubtless more to say if you would care to say it. Someone has her hand up. Well, I can't see, so they just have to speak out. Uh, it's it's Michaela, Brother Shankara. Oh, I just... Michaela, remember, I can't I... see. So okay. just speak out, dear. Uh, well, I like what I was just listening to Hymas' story, and that's very beautiful. And it's like it's like miracles. It's like you feel that presence, and the one without the second to me is that oneness. That there's no separation. So you're always in that present state, which is really our true nature. And so when you're within that state, then the divine presence, you start seeing miracles happen all the time because yes. you're perceiving with your right mind so that's all i wanted to say <laughs> well beautifully said the, the 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 thing is though we call them miracles but they're not really miracles according to the saints they are just the trueness of nature it isn't that something extraordinary or uh, super normal has happened it is, that is the normal state of our being, but most of the time, because we act from selfishness rather than selflessness, it gets blocked. So these miracles don't happen. These, 
this, these spontaneous uh, acts of grace don't there we're not visited by them when we're in that selfish state so thank you uh michaela for for saying it that way yes th we use the word miracles but in fact they're not they're not extra normal or super normal they're just they are just the normal they are just what is meant to be uh when we get out of the way when we get our selfishness out of the way anything else from anyone <laughs> yes Bhagavata, i've been waiting to hear from you <laughs> you know to me one of the unfortunate things which happened in our education we started counting one two three four five six if ramakrishna was taught the mathematics, he would say one, 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 because he, he could not go beyond one. Yes. To me, that is our misfortune. Because if you come to think about it, even the miracles, we call them miracles because we don't see the ordinary things which are happening around us all the time. But logically, if these miracles, what we call <coughs> miracles, were not happening, you will not be here. I will not be here, none of us will be here. Mm -hmm. It is sustained by a series of the miracles. You call them phenomenon, you call it miracle, but everything is a miracle. <coughs> you have to have the right vision to see them in the right perspective. Same way, I liked the concept that even the teacher and the disciple, the disciple what comes from is a part of discipline, is disciplined. And therefore, his disciple. So, at some point, even the teacher and the taught, they become one. Yes. And that, to me, is the beauty of the earth in which we are living. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bhagavad. And with regard to what you said previously, the way you opened this, Einstein made the statement: "There are two ways to live. You can behave and think yeah. as if." Every, nothing is a miracle yeah or you can behave and think as if everything, everything. is a miracle yes. and he said the second way is much you you're much more you're much happier you're much more integrated mm -hmm. when you think that everything is a miracle so thank you Michele thank you uh, Bhagirat for those observations on the word miracle Indeed, the whole thing is miraculous if we think about it from that perspective. Yes. It, 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 which is what gives us this uh, attitude of gratitude that Tom Carr was talking about earlier. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, it's just phenomenal. You know, everything that uh, comes to us. And as Holy Mother said, we come even to see the suffering as a blessing. Why? Because it draws our attention back to the divine, but to the to the source of being, and away from our um, self-centeredness. Anything else from anyone before we close? That way, Brother Shankar, the birth is a miracle. Death is not. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand. We think, why death? Why death? Why death? But the question is, why not death? But why birth? Why birth? Why birth? And birth is a real good example of how one second to none. Because there is a sperm, there is an ovum, two of them, they become one. And then life proliferates. Yes. So that's why I think this of one, two, three numerology is really misleading if we do not know how to do it. Yes, exactly. We have to see it all in the divine context. We have to see it all as some, some manifestation of the divine. Uh, for the lack of better word, we can call it divine synchronicity. Ah, 
Jerry Brenner's favorite word. Yes. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, Jerry Brenner can can give you can reel off a, a, a series of synchronicities that uh, it happen to him every day, every day, every day, <clears throat> every week. And it's because he's watching, he's looking, he's alert. Who is uh, that? Who? Who? Jerry Brunner, uh-huh. Lori's, Lori's husband. You know him. Uh, he's, he's a singer and guitarist. Yeah, 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 of course. I know. Yeah, you've known him for many of years. Of course, for years. Yeah. He was one of Yogesh Ananda's favorite of course. musicians. Yeah. So, yeah, speaking of Yogesh Ananda Ji, uh, we just celebrated his yeah. 100th birthday oh. on February the 3rd. Oh, dear. He would have been 100 on that day. Mm-hmm. Ah, but uh, he's <clears throat> right here. Alive in all of us. Yeah, well, he's he actually appears to in yes. dreams to his disciples. Yes. So he's very much alive and well. Yeah. All right. Anything further from anyone, dears? Oh, uh, brother, sure. I. Oh, am I allowed? Go ahead. No, go, go ahead, ahead brother. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is a little bit of a prayer that I, I, I don't know. I uh, it occurred to means it. Uh, I don't uh, means I came up with, uh, with all the meditation that I do for um, thinking about Divine Mother, and I was wondering if you would want me to share that. Please do. So i um, again. I, I my mother tongue is Bengali, but this is in English. I translated that. So it goes this way. It says, Dear Mother, you are around me. You're within me. I am because you are. Please continue to hold me close so that I can be the best you want me to be. I'm yours. Love you, Ma. (laughs) Oh, uh, please, again, type that out. Send it to Cindy and we'll post it along with the talk. This is priceless. This is exactly it. I am because you are. This is this is that uh, little sequence that uh, Swami Sridharananda talked about. We start off quite legitimately with the idea, I am. What else can we say? I am. But then something else happens. This is the dawn of reverence or awe that is spoken about in the introduction to Bhakti Yoga. I am but something is beyond, something is bigger, something is creating this. I am and thou art. But then it matures to just exactly what you said, Gaurav. I am because thou art. This exists because thou exist. And then finally, the final stages, Swami Sridharananda says, you, you have the realization. It's not an idea. It's not a thought. It's simply the deep realization and conviction. There is no really me. There is only thou. And thou art doing everything, including uh, creating the uh, feeling and, uh, and sense that there is this, this I. So the the I simply merges, as Adi Shankaracharya says, in the ocean of consciousness. Wow. So thank you for that poem. Just like last week, we posted Marla's poem. Yeah. Uh, now we'll post these others that are come up today. And of course, uh, Paramananda's uh, oh. poem and prayer are in the talk notes. So if you want it, you can go and it'll be there and you can copy it out for yourself if you like. Anything else from anyone, you cherished ones? All right, dears. 
Shankara? Yes, dear. Um, I think I need to point out that Jerry wouldn't say that he has synchronicities every day. <laughs> really? But, but he has so many amazing synchronicities. Um, and I just want you, I, I was just going to ask before Uma mentioned it, but I, I wondered if you could speak about synchronicities. Yeah. Please, if you have anything to share. Well, Are you talking about who? Synchronicities are simply the inevitable result of the divine being being both seemingly external to us and making something happen. It isn't really true that it's external to us, but it, something happens. And then we'll do something. So there'll be uh, in in some conversation we hear or something that we see uh, on a sign or something that uh, awakens some spiritual feeling or other feeling within us. And then we're going along and suddenly that same thing will appear. We'll open a book and that's the first thing we see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we, we somebody will turn around and that's what's written on the front of their t-shirt. <laughs> you know, um, that's what's printed there. These are just little humble examples. Jerry has some Maha examples that I would ask him to share if you're there to be shared. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, these are synchronicities, as, as the Native Americans say, they're happening all the time. Yes. We're just, our attention is directed elsewhere, so we don't see them. But they're constantly happening. <clears throat> and, uh, so, and of course, the Southwestern Indians will tell you they're the work of what they call kachinas or devas. And, and, and it's, it, it's uh, in a sense, it's the universe winking at us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could we say grace of God? Oh, and yes. Oh, it's yes. always like Ram Krishna say, keep your cells up. So maybe, maybe we heard something or we did something that aligned with the Supreme Spirit. Oh, and yes. For that moment, we came together. Yes, exactly. And, and as, uh, as was said earlier, these moments where we feel this alignment, this togetherness, this spontaneous being with, yes, yes. they increase as yes. we increase our spiritual practices, yes. as we prolong our spiritual practices yes. over yes. years. Yes. As Paramananda says, we become more more. Faithful, enduring, and s strong and selfless. Wise. Wise. Yeah. And wise, yes. Yeah. Um, Brother Shankara? Yes, dear. How can we um, not mistake uh, superstitious beliefs to be synchronicities? <laughs> well, first of all, let us never be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, if we make a mistake, we learn about it later. <clears throat> Usually in some relatively harmless way. Sometimes we have hard lessons when we <clears throat> have made a serious mistake. But first of all, let's not be afraid to make mistakes. <clears throat> the other way is by the test of the heart. <clears throat> the mind will never be able, uh, as uh, Tom Carr pointed out earlier, the mind will come up with doubts, fears, paradoxes, uh, counter explanations. So no, the mind won't do it for us. The truth will appear to us by either by our actions 
or by the knowledge of our heart. If we take it to our heart, does it ring true? But let me just give you an example from the life of Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda was playing with his playmates one time, and they said, oh, don't go near that tree. There's a ghost up that tree. There's a ghost in that tree. Don't go near that tree. What was Vivekananda's immediate reaction? He climbed the tree. <laughs> he, went, he went immediately to the tree and climbed it. Climbed it all the way to the top as far as he could go, as far as the branches would support him. Came back down and said, it's just a superstition. There's no ghost in that tree. I found no ghost there. Nothing, nothing to frighten at all. And so what happened? Those Now those playmates could play in the shade of that tree. Before they were afraid to be in the shade of that tree because they thought there was a ghost up that tree. So we test things by our, by our actions. And this is why I say we mustn't be afraid to make a mistake. Mistakes will happen. It says in the Chandi, when, in the Sarvabhat Bhuteshus, it says that mother herself is error. Bhanti. Mother Bhanti. is herself mistakes. Delusion. Well, but it says the word translated in, into English as they use it in, in the English translation of the Chandi, the, the Ramakrishna order official mm -hmm. translation is error. Mm -hmm. Error. So we, we must not be afraid to, uh, if, to, to be mistaken. <clears throat> it will come clear to us. But if we just think about something rather than act on it, we'll never resolve it never ever ever resolve it our left minds simply are not capable of resolving these big questions <clears throat> does that answer it Swayam? um yes brother shankara thank you is there more no no that's okay. it. anything brother else brother shankara. yes Rob. Uh, yeah i like to say that i believe there, there are no such thing as mistakes. Mistakes are not mistakes. They okay. are a profound way of learning. Yes. 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 And we learn things most profoundly through that, what we call mistakes. Yeah. Bob Dylan said it so well. There's no success like failure, and failure is no success at all. <clears throat> so it's... Uh, we, 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 yes, I, I agree with you, Robert. It's a way of talking, though, about being mistaken. <clears throat> you know. But if you think of it that way, it, it makes you shy away from it. And that's what makes people have the fear of the mistakes. But if you think of it as a positive thing, it's, it's showing you this is not the way. Yes, exactly. Dynamically, it's showing you, and 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 then you don't shy away from it. Do you? Did you use the word dynamically? Yes. Oh, ex oh, I yes. love it. Exactly. <laughs> dynamically. Dynamically, yes, it shows. Dynamically, you. which means in action. Krishna says over and over and over and over, "Don't think about it. Do it." Yes. Yes. This is the field of action, and the Atman is the knower. So you do, and as you said, uh, Robert, dynamically you will learn. It's spontaneous, it's natural, but if you hold back, those kids would have never known there was no ghost up that tree if Vivekananda hadn't just the minute he'd heard it, just run right to the tree and climbed it. They would have forever shied away from playing in the shade of that tree. <clears throat> Shankara, if I may. Oh, Amadas, you more than may. You're 
you're so welcome. Hello there. Hello. Um, I'd like to tie in a little something from my experience as a neurophysiologist, and it's my understanding that the largest uh, <clears throat> learning curve in the human experience is the first two years of our life, when uh -huh. we learn how to roll over, sit up, crawl, and walk, and how <laughs> everybody does that is trial and error. Mm -hmm. Unless yes. you took a class. I didn't say there wasn't a class in my neighborhood. So it <laughs> <No>. was <laughs> it was all trial and error. So yes. that seems to be the human condition. And we get the great advantage of doing it before we learn how to think. We're not thinking in words. We don't yet have language to think our way through it. It's all right hemispheric trial and error. We yep. try thousands of things before we find a way that works. And we don't get to proceed to the next level. We don't get to learn how to sit up until we learn how to roll over. Right. We don't get to crawl until we learn how to sit up. And mm -hmm. we try tens of thousands of ways to achieve that whole skill set so that we can come into standing because all the big people are standing. Right. And we know that that's where we want to go. Right. <laughs> as, so it's as, all, all as, trial and error. Exactly. And Vivekananda's codicil to that is companion statement to that is education our learning is nothing more than the training of the nerves yes so if you if you work at learning something learning how to play the guitar uh, learning how to uh, uh, properly uh, cook a really good fried egg you you're you're training the nerves Yes, you're training the coordination of the nerves. Uh, I can remember learning how to hit a golf ball. And uh, I finally got a couple of teachers who gave me the metaphors that I needed so that I could train my nerves using those metaphors. This one teacher said, think of it as a dance step. Oh, yes. Yeah. He said, you're a good dancer. Think of it as a dance step. Da, ra, ra. This is a little, this is the little thing that, uh, uh, it wasn't Sam Sneed, it, maybe it was Sneed. Anyway, one of the great golfers of the 40s, whenever he hit the golf ball, he did this little thing in his mind. Ta, ra, ra, boom, dee. <laughs> you know when the, when the impact with the ball was. Ta ra ra boom dee. Every time he hit the golf ball, that's what went through his mind. He was making it a little musical and dance step. Hmm. It was Sam Snead. Um, Brother Shankara? <laughs> yes, dear. So, what our mother said um, resonated with me because, by Mother's grace, we are fortunate to. Uh, be able to spend time with our growing granddaughter who's now like five and a half months old and we watch her go through this trial and error for you know every single thing be it motor skills or uh, yeah. verbal skills and uh, one interesting thing we noticed was when we uh, talk in front of her and say mom 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 ma, so what she will do is watch intently and then she will say mama but without the sound so she just goes <laughs> and then separately she will make the sound part oh and then she's trying to combine the two yeah. so it's such a yeah. miraculous thing to watch so what is it just appealed to me so much yes and if you if you are attending her closely as i'm sure you are you're seeing that divine being shining out of her eyes, that intelligence, that brilliance, shining out of a, uh, the, a baby's eyes, a baby's smile, a baby's hands, and tiny hands and tiny feet, yeah. they somehow bespeak the divine presence. Mm -hmm. And you, you see it, you just see it. Yes. I can remember so well holding my son Benjamin when he was just tiny mm -hmm. and and seeing that something i didn't use these words in those days this was 1964 
So anyway, it was glorious though. Wow. They were just with God. I try to get them to tell me what the experience was because they were just there. <laughs> they, it's like a union. None of them, they, they won't say a word. Nope. <laughs> so after all that we've, we've had, we've heard here today, even validates that a mistake is not a mistake and we should get away from thinking of it that way. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Robert, for reminding of this, reminding of this very often. It's not a mistake. It's a lesson, Brother Shankara. Every, yes. every little thing that happens, mishaps, are all lessons for next time. <laughs> lessons for next time. Yes. We learn the lessons. <clears throat> but uh, I, I, I like both of what you said, but it, it it reminds me again and again that our our doing is conditioned by the words we use to express ourselves. And so Robert is so right. Get the hell away from the word mistake. Mm -hmm. It's not a mistake. Don't think of it as a mistake and you won't shy away from it, as he said. So well said. Anything else from anyone? Yeah, the trial and error discussion forced me to consider that whenever you're trying to work with new technology that nobody knows, it's always trial and error. And that made me think of Steve Jobs. Oh, oh no, another thought is if you can get to talk to like one of the swamis about your yoga, there'll be a little less error because they can kind of give you guidance and answer questions. But um, if you ever study the life of Steve Jobs, he met with tremendous failures before he became successful. Yes, and it seems that even he believed in synchronicity. Here's what he said, quote, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life, end quote. Wow, Beauty was always so quotable, isn't he, wow. in that book? But, you know, you talk about failures. Steve Jobs hired this guy from Pepsi-Cola to run uh, Apple. And it wasn't long before the guy contrived to get Steve Jobs thrown out of his own company. Mm -hmm. So he was, he wasn't, he no longer was part of Apple. What did he do? He just started another company. What did he name it? Next. <laughs> next. And in 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 and what did he do it next? He designed the operating system, the optimum operating system for computers like the ones that Apple makes. So the minute he got back into his saddle over at Apple, he brought system 10 with him from next and revolutionized computers once again. And if you want to know how badly it revolutionized, how much it revolution, just look what happened over at Microsoft. The minute Steve Jobs uh, introduced System 10, oh, they, they just went through every kind of contortion trying to adapt uh, Windows to, uh, to where it would be uh, uh, something competitive to system 10 put them through put them through conniption fits so beautifully wow. said thank you thank you brahmadas as always how nice quote from steve jobs if you want to type that up and send it to cindy she'll put it with the rest and Thomas Edison tried 2,000 different elements before he happened upon tungsten for the light bulb. Oh, yes. He was, he was very methodical. And, and that's why he said, no, go ahead, Amadas, I interrupted. And when he was asked about the failures, he said, what failures? I learned something every time. If it didn't work, then I learned that it didn't work. And I get to move on to the next one. And, and furthermore, if he, had... he learned what did work in other applications. Yes. And, and so this is why Thomas Edison said, because he was appraised for his uh, genius, his, his inspiration. 
Mm. And he said, he said, inspiration, hell, it's 90% perspiration, 10% inspiration. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. And that's, that's true of our own work, our own spiritual work. It's 90% perspiration, just doing the work every day. Which is hard. <laughs> it's yeah. very hard for years and years. Yes. You know, this sitting right here was not very diligent. I'd been given the instructions, but you know, I was preoccupied, distracted, angry. <clears throat> Long time before I got diligent. I'd like to add something. Uh, even with music, uh, the goal is the process on the way there. Mm -hmm. uh, with every song, it, it, it's going to reach a point. And there are many ways to get to that point. And in and, 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 and practicing, you find that this method, method A, may be more efficient than method B, but method B may have a more melodic flow that uh -huh. gets you there with with a more profound point. I, I, I hope I was able to... This well, is, this is why Vivekananda said, music is the highest form of art. And for those who understand it, the highest form of worship. Art is a matter of combining. There's no such thing as art without combining the deep inspiration of the heart. <laughs> with the mythology, the methodology, I'm sorry, the methodology, and as you said, methodologies of the left mind. So that's what creates art. And as you said, the inspiration may be there, but how to bring it to fruition? Mm -hmm. That's the, this is why, mm -hmm. as Vivekananda said, the highest form of art. Yeah, for I, some reason you, for some reason you're able to say it much just better than me. <laughs> well, no, it's just I, I, I don't, I didn't say anything. Vivekananda said something, Robert. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I just married what you said to what Vivekananda said. Very good. And 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 we get the, but you know, it's it's because it's because I'm a poet and I understand what it is to to create art and uh, so uh, but Vivekananda said music is the highest form of art why because it is nonverbal it isn't even it isn't even imagistic it's beyond thought and speech in that way and so it uh, and all you have to do is listen to Ode to Joy, and you know exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. I guess the reason I wasn't able to say it because it's beyond speech. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that rascal Gustavo Dudamel, who, who turned the Los Angeles Philharmonic into the world's greatest orchestra, dad gummed if he didn't let New York hire him away. So now he's going to the New York Philharmonic. So. It's really going to be a loss to Los Angeles. I mean, to the cultural life of Los Angeles, they're going to have a hard time for filling those shoes. Mother's grace be done. Mother's will be done to find a replacement for Dudamel as he goes away to New York. It's inevitable because they can pay him so much more money in New York. And probably promised him the moon. We'll see whether they pay off or not. Their board has a notorious reputation for being meddlesome. <clears throat> Leonard Bernstein complained of it bitterly. Anything else from anyone? Um, well, thing comes to mind about trial and error, and uh, to use different terminology, I would say um, I heard somewhere. What are the means to the end? An end to the means. What does it, the relationship between the two? So 
it says means are the end in the making. Ah. And the end is the fruition of means. Yes, 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 yes. Both are so intertwined, <clears throat> inseparable. You cannot have fruit without that earlier stages of, yes. does somebody say that um, just crawling and then sitting and standing up, etc. So in order to reach that end, continuity of means must be there. And otherwise, end will not happen without means. Yes, very well said. Uma, can you repeat what you said about oh means of the end in the making? You, you, you said that you began with the means are the end in the making. Yeah. And then the end is and, like the fruition. Yeah, um, that is what I made up because I forgot exact words. <laughs> second, second part. But what it says is end is the um, coming together of all your previous efforts means. So, end, I would say, is the fruition or fruit of uh, whatever you did efforts. So, second part, as soon as I know, I will bring next time. Okay, dear. First, yeah. First is clear. Means are the end in the making. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. And can I, can I, going back to mistakes, <laughs> I was reminded uh, asking a friend years ago how he became such a great baker. Mm -hmm. And he said, by making lots of mistakes. Yeah, but, but, but as Robert says, they weren't mistakes. Right. They were simply, <laughs> they were simply not optimum yet. Right. And so, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Can be called experiments. Steps. Yeah. And yeah. Steps on the way to success. Yeah, experiments. Right. <laughs> and and there is simply nothing that doesn't yield to that. This is why, you know, a, a great Japanese uh, master, I forget in what field, was once praised for having great talent. And I'm going to paraphrase what he said. What what he said was, talent schmalent. Talent has nothing to do with it. You may be graced with talent, but unless there's tremendous effort, that talent will not produce any great results. But he said, the someone who has, who doesn't have any manifest or is seeming talents, can achieve the same great results. It will just take them more work, yeah. which indicates that talent is something that is brought, so to speak, from a prior lifetime or is somehow genetically delivered. <clears throat> but it's interesting in the book Gödel Escher Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach is, is credited as saying, anyone who prayed as much and worked as hard as I do, can achieve the same. Yep, I agree. Prayed as hard, prayed as much, he says. Anyone who prays, prayed as much, anyone who prays as much and works as hard as I do will achieve the same. <clears throat> so, you know, once again, he, he, he just took the tiny self right out of the equation. Mm. A tiny self will never work that hard and <clears throat> they don't get any gratification out of it. It is only the greater self that uh, will pray, the, the one that is being addressed in Paramananda's poem. So we can say prayer plus persistence. Oh, absolutely. Full proof. Absolutely. And that's exactly what Vivekananda says time and again. Mm -hmm. He says it in Karma Yoga. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the butcher became an illumined soul 
<laughs> because he every day applied himself to taking the very best care he could of his aging parents. Oh. This is this is the story of the butcher's Gita, the the butcher's illumination. Uh, as as related by Vivekananda in his book Karma Yoga. Mm -hmm. Nothing but persistence with applying the right principles, of course. Yes. <clears throat> Anything else from any of you wonderful persistent people? Um brother, it almost feels like uh we should we should consider ourselves to be those light bulbs. And uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yes, indeed. And that's, that's about what, it. That's what, that's what Swami Prabhupada says. <clears throat> he says, in, in How to Know God, he says, you know, don't think you are the, uh, the light coming from the light bulb. You, you, you are the light coming from the light bulb comes from the, the you are the bulb itself, the element, and the and the, the the surrounding bulb, but the light comes from the energy that goes through the bulb. Yeah, not you yourself. It actually uh, becomes uh, it's become extremely humorous when I see like people passing judgments on the others, and as if they're, dude, you you know nothing. I mean, we're just uh... <laughs> and precisely, Dora. Well, this is why judgment, this is why Christ said, judge yeah. not, lest ye be judged. No, you don't, you don't even know what you're talking about, kind of thing. And, and, why Holy, and why Holy Mother said, if you want peace of mind, my child, do not find fault with others. If you must find fault, find fault with yourself. Anything else to contribute to this wonderful conversation, this wonderful sharing? Marcia, I, I was surprised that you didn't use the analogy of the, the Jacob's ladder with the, uh, mistake, with the mistake. <laughs> I was looking for you to do that. <laughs> if, if I didn't say it, Robert, you say it. How does this apply? How does? <laughs> Yeah. Well, each each step is, is is what we call a mistake. Yeah. Going up, going up the ladder. To well, read. you know, it didn't it didn't occur to me that way, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, it's it's both a mistake and a necessary step if we're going to climb the ladder. Because I guess I was searching for a, a a word or something to use instead of the word mistake. Metaphor to get us away from that. Right. Yeah. Well, climbing Jacob's ladder is exactly it. Yeah. You know, and uh, and Jacob had made a grave error, and that's why he he had stolen his brother's birthright by contrivance, and that's why he was having to flee, and why he was lying there with his head on a rock for a pillow, which again is a wonderful metaphor. Uh, and but the, he had not been abandoned by his divine partner, so to speak, which then gave him this vision of having to climb that ladder to, and that, that he wasn't going to get what he'd what he thought he'd stolen. Beautiful, beautiful metaphors in the Bible. So many beautiful metaphors. Yes. <clears throat> I was getting the feeling that uh, uh, that this group could make a, 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 a more profound contribution to the world. And I think it will and is, and I think it will go beyond this dimension. I, I, I couldn't agree more, Robert, but I, I particularly agree with the word is, that it is doing it, that the radiance that comes from this spiritual togetherness and spiritual effort is in the collective unconscious. 
and it helps lift up and purify that spirit, that collective unconscious, which is right now in such torment. Yes. yes. Such Absolutely. torment. Yes. Absolutely. All right, dears. Anything else from anyone? All right. Let there be peace in outer space. Let there be peace in the sky, on the earth, and in the waters. Let there be peace in the herbs, the plants, and the trees. May the gods be peaceful. May the whole universe be pervaded by peace. Let that infinite universal peace prevail throughout my being. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace and beneficence be unto us and to all beloved beings everywhere. Om Asatoma Satgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma Amritangamaya. Avir Avir Moiti. O oh, dearly beloved, lead us from this realm of endless noise and relentless falsehood to thine abode of silence, clarity, serenity, and peace. Lead us from darkness to light lead us from darkness and ignorance to the brilliance of thy wisdom and love lead us from death to immortality light us through and through light us through and through with thy everlasting shining presence jai shri guru maharaj ki jai durga 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 may we each be safe May we all be healthy. May we be cheerful. May we have peace of mind. And may we be always and know we are always in the loving and protective embrace of the divine being as our mother and father. Such a joy to have been with you this morning and early afternoon. May you all be well and in bright spirits. Uh, the next time we'll meet, of course, is Tuesday for the study of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And then on Wednesday, we'll meet for the study of Bhagavad Gita. On Saturday, for the study of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, under the title of How to Know God by Swami Prabhupada. And then I don't recall what the next, what next Sunday's talk title is. But it doesn't matter. There'll be one mother willing. So is there any final thought or wish or observation from anyone? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you in almost. Yes, well, Jai 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 <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna Jai Ma. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Until next time.